friends this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam please make sure that you have watched part 1 before going ahead with part 2 what is pressure pressure is force per unit area that means when they apply force to some object that force applied per unit area of the object is termed as pressure. So this is something which you must have been studying since your junior classes. So here in this chapter our aim is to study about pressure in fluids. To start with we are introducing pressure from the very basics. So we can write it as pressure is equal to force by area. Let us take the example of a needle and a very thick blunt cylindrical rod on the skin. So this is what I will try to explain you. What I am trying to explain here is how is pressure dependent on force and area. Now let us suppose this is your hand. This is your palm rather. And in the first case we have a nid, I mean syringe or a needle which is you, which you can see it is a very sharp, it has a very sharp end. On the other hand you have a, some pencil, you have a pencil the back of which is real blunt. If you compare these two you can see that this is very sharp whereas this is very blunt. What do we mean when I say that this is very sharp? It means if you see the area is very small, area in the sense the surface area of the point of the needle that is very very small when compared to this blunt surface right if you compare these two now what will happen if i poke each of them into your palm let us suppose if i poke this needle into your palm it will pain you right you will be hurt because the needle will get pierced into your skin whereas if I press the pencil hard against your skin, what will happen? It will not pierce inside as well as it will not hurt you much. It will not hurt you as much as this needle will hurt you or any other sharp object. So why is this difference? That is because in the first case, that is in the case of the needle, the surface area, I mean the area of contact between the palm and the needle is very very small and from this we can see that if the area is small then the pressure will be large so here so here the area was small therefore the pressure was large whereas in this case if you see the area of contact between the palm and the pencil that area was comparatively larger Therefore, the pressure was less. Now, pressure was less means the pain which you feel is also less. So, what do we observe from this? We observe that the two important criteria or the two important factors which decides pressure is force and the second one is coverage area. So these are the two factors which determine the weight or which determine the magnitude of pressure. So what do we conclude from this slide? We conclude that greater is the force, greater is the pressure, greater is the area or this coverage area, lesser is the pressure. Now let us take an example. You would have observed, let us take a very common example or a practical example to illustrate the role of pressure. So you would have observed it some kind of shows where people show their stunts or in television shows or somewhere or the other you would have seen that people lie on a bed of nails. What is a bed of nails? Bed of nails is nothing but you have a long rectangular wooden slab or any rectangular uh, base on which you have a large number of nails which are placed just one beside the other. They are all identical nails and are of equal height. So it forms a bed of nails. 
and you would have seen that a person comes and he lies comfortably over that bed of nails. So why is it that if you place your foot on a single nail, the nail will get pierced and you will be hurt. Whereas when you are lying on such a bed, I mean such a large number of nails, then you are not getting hurt. Why is it so? This is because when you try to place your toe or your leg on a single nail, the tip being very small. So when we talk of a single nail again, the tip is again very small. I mean it, the area of contact or the coverage area is very small. Now if the coverage area is very small, then the impact is extremely large that is the pressure is extremely large because pressure is inversely proportional to coverage area. Greater the coverage area, lesser is the pressure. Similarly, lesser the coverage area, greater is the pressure. So in that case, in case of a single nail, the pressure which is felt is extremely large and therefore you are hurt. Whereas in case of a bed of nails, since there are a large number of nails which are very closely spaced with each other, let us suppose this, this is the area of one nail, this is another, this is another, this is another, this is another. Similarly, you have so many nails placed together. So what happens is, all these small, small pointed areas together makes up a comparatively larger area, right? Therefore, when a person is lying over the bed of nails, the weight of the body or the weight of the person is compensated by the entire coverage area of all the nails. That is why the surface area increases to cover the body. Now several nails support the body's weight. All so many nails support the weight of the body. As a result, the surface area increases here the coverage area. Coverage area increases therefore the pressure is reduced or the impact that is felt is reduced. So it doesn't pain and the person can comfortably lie. Now please make sure or make a note of this point that in case out of so many nails even if one nail is greater in height when compared to the others that will hurt the person because in that case the same scenario will arise since one nail will be taller than the others that particular nail's surface area will pierce into the body because the coverage area will again become very small and the impact will become large so you make sure that when it comes to a bed of nails where a person is lying it has to be made sure that all the nails are identical and they have equal height. So this is what we illustrated in order to explain you that how does pressure play a role behind many such things which come across in our day to day life. Now we will concentrate on or we will start studying what is pressure in case of fluids because fluids is all that we are going to study in detail in this chapter. So till now we saw what is pressure. Right? It is nothing but force per unit area. Now let us see what is pressure in case of fluids. Pressure in fluids is the normal force exerted by fluid per unit area. So it is very much related to what is pressure that is force per unit area. So in case of fluids it is the force which is exerted by the fluids per unit area. The only point to note here is that Pressure, it is a normal force that means the force acts perpendicular to the surface of contact. That means let us suppose, let us consider a body, let us consider this ball which is submerged in water. So in case of this ball, the force is exerted by the fluid here, the fluid is water. The force is exerted by the fluid perpendicular to the surface of the object. What do we mean by the surface of the object? That means the surface, if you see, the surface of this object was coming in contact with the fluid. So the pressure, when we talk of pressure, it is the force that is applied perpendicular to the surface. That means 
somewhat in this direction. So the force is always applied perpendicular. Now a question might arise in your mind that why is it that the force is always applied perpendicular to the surface? That is because had the let us consider for a second that the force is not applied perpendicular and it is applied say parallel to the surface of the object. In that case it would have been moving. I mean there would have been a motion along the horizontal direction but if you see that the fluid is at rest and the body is submerged in water since it is not moving therefore there is no pressure which makes the object move or which makes any kind of movement along the horizontal direction therefore we say that the pressure when we talk of pressure the force is applied normal to the surface now let us look at some basic characteristics of pressure pressure is a scalar quantity somewhat some a quantity which has only magnitude no direction so when i talk of scalar quantity only magnitude no direction what is the dimension of pressure it is ml to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2 how do we arrive at this? If you see, pressure is nothing but force per unit area. Right? What is force? Force is nothing but mass into acceleration. This is area. So what is mass? Mass would be m. What is acceleration? Acceleration is meter per second. That is lt to the power minus 1. This divided by area. What is area? Area would be L square. So from this we can say this will be M L to the power minus 1 T to the power minus 2. I'm sorry, acceleration is meter per second square. So this is T to the power minus 2. So this will be the dimension of pressure. Now Something which I missed to explain was when we talked of scalar quantity you would have noticed that pressure is forced by area. When I say that this is a scalar quantity a question that should arise in your mind is that force is a vector quantity. So if force is a vector quantity how is pressure which is dependent on force a scalar quantity. Now a very important point which I would like to clarify here is here this force is not the force which is a vector quantity. It is basically the component of force normal to the area. So what is this force? This is basically component of force which is normal to the area. So component of force is definitely a scalar quantity. You remember we studied, let us suppose any vector A which can be written in terms of its components AX I cap plus AY J cap. So here we told that A is a vector quantity but AX and AY they are scalar quantities. So AX and AY are scalar quantities but is B. A altogether is a vector quantity. So here also this F is nothing but the component of force which is normal to the area. Therefore pressure is a scalar quantity. Now unit of pressure SI unit Newton per meter square. As you can see from here pressure is force per unit area. Now unit of force is Newton and unit of area is meter square. So it is Newton per meter square or Pascal a common unit which is generally used to measure pressure is atmospheres. So we measure pressure in terms of atmospheres which is generally denoted as ATM. Now what is this atmosphere? So how do you be define atmospheres? It is nothing but the pressure exerted by the atmosphere at sea level. So this is how we define atmosphere. As I told you, it is basically a unit to measure pressure. So how do we define atmosphere? It is as the name suggests, pressure exerted by atmosphere at sea level. We will discuss about, about atmospheric pressure in detail for, in the data half. So here, as of now, it is enough to know that what one atmosphere, what do we mean when we say one atmosphere? It is 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 pascals is basically 10 to the power 5 pascals. So this is the relation between atmospheres and pascal. 
So 1 atmosphere is 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. So, thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.